Yay, welcome back. I'm glad you stayed tuned for part two. It's a very good job you came back for part two because I forgot something really, really important in part one. Um, and that is to consider what the voltages are uh, around the FET when the switch is not made, released or open. So there's no voltage on the gate. Uh, so the drain is connected to the source effectively. We've got current flowing through here. Um, so if we were to take a meter and measure the voltages around the circuit, um, this is what we would get. And handily enough, I have a meter here just for that very purpose. So uh, let's just put the uh, zero volt probe onto zero volts and we'll measure the voltage that we've got on the source. Well, the source is connected to the zero volt line, so I'm going to measure on the source zero volts while the switch is not pressed. And if I go on the gate and measure the voltage there, well, it's not connected to anything, so that's going to be nil point zero volts as well. What about the drain? Well again, um, if I measure the voltage here, if you remember, I said when the transistor is on, it's just like having a piece of wire from there to there. There's, there's no resistance between the drain and the source, current's flowing through there, so if, if the drain is the same point as the source, I'm going to have zero volts on there as well. Um, and that is in the condition when the switch is released, uh, open or not made. Um, and in that condition, of course, the relay is going to be energised with current flowing through in that direction. Phew, glad I remembered that. Right, now let's look at the opposite condition. Now we're going to push the button and see what happens. So thinking about the technically correct language, now we've pushed this button, we could say that the contacts are made on S1. Um, we could say that it's been pushed as opposed to being released. Um, or we could say that the contacts are closed as opposed to being open. So technically correct language for pushing the switch. Here we've got a battery. That's the circuit symbol for a battery. But the odd thing about it is they've connected the positive plate of battery to the zero volt line. So therefore, um, we're going to find a voltage here of minus 5 volts because it's connected to the negative plate. Following through the switch we come to a resistor R1. Now FETs, unlike bipolar junction transistors, don't really take any current in them. They're pressure or voltage operated devices rather than current. So there's not really going to be any current flowing down here but we never like in electronics a situation where you could have unlimited current. So in case something goes wrong with the transistor we put R1 in it's just a 1k resistor and that will limit the amount of current that could flow if something should go wrong. So we push the button and minus 5 volts is connected to the gate and of course without even using the meter my brain tells me that that minus 5 volts is now going to appear on the gate. Minus 5 volts will appear there. On an N channel FET that minus 5 volts on the gate will switch it off. So it's now as though the transistor is no longer there at all. There's no connection anymore between the drain and the source. It's open. So that should then give me my other voltages. So the source is still connected directly to the zero volt line. So that's never going to change. It's still going to be zero volts. However, my drain is now connected directly to 24 volts and it's not going anywhere so there's no current flowing but the pressure will still be there so this will now rise up to the full supply rail of 24 volts so I now have 24 volts on the drain and that's with the switch pushed, made or closed minus 5 on the gate, turns the FET off Source is connected to zero volts, so it's always going to be source, it's always going to be zero volts. The drain is now still connected to 24 volts, but it's not going anywhere, it's a dead end, so the pressure just builds up to the full rail supply of 24 volts. Current is no longer flowing through the coil, so now we switch from the relay being energised to being de-energised, the technically correct language for that. 
That just leaves the diode to think about, which was a bit of a mystery. The magnetic field now collapses back into the centre of the coil and all those magnetic flux lines cut through the wires of the coil and induce a very large current into the coil in a polarity as such that it tries to make this end of the coil positive and this end negative and tries to push current through here. Well, the only place it can go is through the transistor, which is currently off. Um, and that's going to damage the transistor. It's not going to like having that stuck up it. Um, it's going to damage it. So we need to provide a current path for this back EMF, as it's called. It's like a kickback from the coil. And its technical term, term is a back EMF, or technical urn, if you prefer. Back EMF, electromotive force, the kickback from the coil. It's got to go somewhere. Now it's handily enough, it's positive this end, negative that end. So our diode will now conduct current in this direction and it will flow round in a loop. Um, some good words to put in there would be um, it's dissipating the back EMF from the coil, uh, it's a, providing a path for that current to flow. Uh, until it dissipates. That, that would be a good term to put in there. Uh, and I think that's pretty much how that circuit works. I think I've covered all the components and all the technical language that you need to put in there. So now I really look forward to reading all your wonderful answers about how that circuit works. Thank you and goodbye.